Hey everybody, the video that you're about to watch was actually shot about a month ago. And the reason why I delayed posting it was I've never swapped out a radiator before and I wanted to make sure everything worked. And I wanted to give you a more thorough review of the Koyo radiator. So I'm gonna cut to the footage of the install and then I'll be back at the very end with some thoughts, observations, and a review on this product. Today's the day I've been putting off for a little while now because I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, today we're going to be going over the cooling system in my Xterra because I'm going to be doing a two month road trip in the middle of summer and the last thing I want to do is to overheat and break things. So here's a couple things I got. I've got a Koyo radiator for the truck so hopefully that didn't get busted up in transit. Um, I also have some new upper and lower radiator hoses and a thermostat. The truck has 130,000 miles. I don't know when the radiator has been serviced or if it's ever been serviced. First step is to get the radiator uh, thing, the radiator skid plate off the truck. So we'll get started there. That literally took forever. I normally use an electric ratchet, but it's still kind of early on Saturday morning and I didn't want to piss off the neighbors. So. Um, next thing we're going to drain this sucker. So right here is the pet cock. This is where the fluid drains from the radiator. I'm also going to go up top and open up the radiator cap and the reservoir cap so that we have pressure pushing everything down. And of course, we're going to slap in one of these guys to catch the stuff there. So let's go ahead and get everything situated up upstairs. Super important, never, ever, 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 ever open this when it's hot. The system's been off all night, so it's safe. Over here, we have another guy. So this is your overflow, we're gonna undo that. And what that does, open this all up, just it makes it so there's air pushing down so that when we drain it, it drains a lot faster. So let's go ahead and open up the pet cock over here. Still looks really, really clean. I just flushed it not too long ago. Now, to get all this stuff out of the way so we can get the radiator out, we need to first undo these two bolts, one, two, and then there's a snap that you can just pull up and it disconnects there. And from here, you'll, you'll have access to two screws here. So it's another 10 millimeter, one, two. And then next, you gotta disconnect this hose from this piece here. Gently slide this guy off. Careful not to break this plastic piece. Next, we're gonna disconnect the MAF here. So disconnect that hose there, and then disconnect this hose over here. So now we can just lift this guy out. Next, I'm going to release the cover here and just move this out of the way. Kind of just tilt this back right there. We're gonna get the grill out of the way so that we can get to the clips that hold the radiator down. I broke my plastic uh, clips so I'm just gonna, I have them zip tied in so that's pretty easy to remove, just one. And four. And now I can pull the grill back so we can get access to these guys. Again, ten millimeters. just lifts out. Next, I'm gonna disconnect the lower radiator hose, which is right here. And it looks like there's a zip tie on here too, which I'm gonna cut off. Just like 
there's some residual stuff there. So make sure you have a, a place to catch all this stuff when it comes out. Next, I'm gonna remove the upper hose here. Now this truck doesn't have automatic transmission, but if it did, there would be some cooler lines over here, I think. I think they'd be over here to disconnect, but this is a manual, so I don't have that issue. Next, we're gonna disconnect the hose that goes to the reservoir. And also, you want to just pop these off here. They're kind of here. Another spot right there. And then this is now free over here. So we're almost there, it's pretty wiggly now. Next we're gonna disconnect the radiator shroud. So there's another 10 millimeter here. And one here. So before we disconnect the shroud, there's a couple things we have to take off. There's an electrical connector right there. It's also zip tied right here. Another section right here and then deep down here, there it is, where my finger is. There's four spots, so one, two, three, and then an electrical connector right there that needs to come out. All right, up here, there's a couple spaces that we can just squeeze to disconnect and remove this lower shroud there, it's disconnected. So now this won't come out. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the condenser fan off of the radiator. Now, this should just come right out. In theory. There it goes. And the shroud. It should come straight out too. Yes. Cool. Oops. I only I have two 12 millimeter bolts right there. And on the other side over here. And then I think that's pretty much it. That's all it's holding the radiator in. If you look right here, there seems to be like a rubber piece here that the other side didn't have. Almost so close. There we go, that's it. All right, so this side is free now. I'm just gonna secure the condenser to the firewall so it doesn't come falling down when I take the radio out. Ghetto, but it's temporary. So now, should be able to just pull this out. Maybe. Perhaps. There we go. Okay, now we're going straight up. Now that we've got some room, I'm gonna give you a quick tour real fast. Down in here, behind the fan, this is where you stick your socket wrench to take the tension off the belt. It's really easy, you just insert it in there, just like a socket, and you turn it to the left, so lefty-loosey, and what that does, it's gonna push this pulley down that way, which will take tension off the belt, and you can pull the old belt off. Then, when you put the new belt on, just put it all back the way it was. If you forgot, like I did, just do a quick Google search and type in dry belt for 2005 plus Xterra and it'll give you a diagram of where the bolts, I'm sorry, where the belt is supposed to go. An easy way to tell is that the part that has grooves on the pulley 
is the part where the groove part of the belt goes and then the smooth part goes in there. Awesome, I just dropped a screwdriver in the coolant. That's fun. Okay, next, since I'm here, we're gonna change the thermostat. Thermostat lives down in here behind the fan. There's two hoses that go in. There's that big one that goes to the radiator and there's this other small one. Now, another way to figure out where the bolts are gonna go, which ones we're gonna remove, is to look at the new thermostat. So this one's a brand new OEM genuine Nissan part. You can see that the big hose goes on the right, the small one on the left, and then we have one, two, three bolts that go in. So that automatically tells me right now that if you go back here, there's a couple bolts that I can see right off the top. This one that's closest to us right here is not one we're gonna remove, but the one down a little bit lower is. And then we have a couple others down in there. I'm hoping I don't have to take the fan out because that would be awesome. For some reason, everyone else on YouTube that has done the radiator swap has had to take out this fan. I was able to pull it out without removing the fan. So I'm not really sure what's different about my truck, but yeah, if I can get away with not having to remove this, I'll be happy. Next, I'm gonna try to get to the thermostat. So one bolt, two bolt, three bolt. Let's see if I can get in here without having to move the fan out of the way. That was easy. That's one. Second one is right in here. Please tell me I can reach it. It looks like I can. <laughs> if you don't have a wobble set, these are clutch because they help bend into weird angles and stuff. This would be absolutely awful if I didn't have a swabble. I mean, it's hard as it is, but this makes it a lot nicer. Okay, this last one's gonna be really tricky. It's down here in the bottom. Got it. That was a royal paint. Okay. Oops. All right, so there's the old part. Thankfully, the gasket came off with it. All right, so here's the old part. Looks pretty cooked. There's some deposits on here. And then A lot of pressure required to move that spring. The new one, pretty nice. Yeah, definitely more resistance on the older unit. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take note of how this hose is situated here, and then I'm just gonna put it onto the new thermostat now so that I can just stick this in there and not have to deal with this clamp thing inside the truck because that's going to be really, really hard. So I'm going to do that right now. So this hose still looks pretty good. I'm going to reuse it. Okay. And it was about this angle here. So I'm going to put this back on. That's about the same angle as it was when I took it off. Now I'm gonna put this back in the truck. So this is kind of neat, I just noticed this. The new gasket has an adhesive back, so if you just peel that back, now I can stick this onto the motor and not have to worry about it falling. I got the new gasket on there. It's kind of nice that it had some adhesive on it, so it helped kind of line it up ahead of time. Now I'm just gonna stick the new thermostat on here. So next, I have this new hose. But what I want to do is I want to take all of the clamps and the heat shield. This guy has a heat shield right here. I'm going to put all this onto the new hose and then install it. Alright, 
so it took quite a bit of jujitsu getting this radiator in here. I hope I didn't damage it too bad because I was bumping into things and so hopefully it's still intact. <laughs> down everything looks good I'm gonna throw in some Nissan blue I hope you found the install part helpful now I want to give you a quick review some observations with the new radiator and the thermostat setup and the blue coolant my road trip covered 10,000 miles I started here in San Diego California on July 5th of 2019 today is August 10th so I've been gone for a month I went from San Diego California over to Flagstaff Arizona then I went down south to White Sands New Mexico then further south to El Paso, Texas, then went across and hung out in Houston, Texas, went over to South Florida, up to Virginia, to Niagara Falls, then over to Ann Arbor, Michigan, then went over to St. Paul, Minnesota, then back east to Madison, Wisconsin, and then I went across the Dakotas, got to see Mount Rushmore, went into Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, Oregon, and then came back down the five through California to come back home. So 10,000 miles in total. With this new setup, I'm running 15 degrees cooler than I was previously. So before the swap, I was running about 210 degrees just um, around town and on the freeway. With this setup, the truck likes to run at 195 degrees. The only time I ever got up past 200 was if I was climbing hills and it was really hot. And I went through the gamut of, of, of heat on this trip and went down from like 50 degrees on the low side up to about 106, 110 on the high side. And going uphill, the hottest the truck ran was 204 degrees. I did get the truck up to 210 degrees, but that was because I was idling for an hour in 100 degree weather. I was doing a Zoom call, a conference call inside the truck for an hour and I was running the AC. So that was the hottest the truck ever ran and that was only idling and that's probably because there was no motion going into the radiator. So overall, I'm super stoked with the new setup and this truck is going to need a lot of maintenance after 10,000 miles. I actually bought tires on the trip because the old ones are gone, but stay tuned for new videos. I'm going to be doing a whole lot of maintenance and hopefully soon we'll be up with another project vehicle. So stay tuned for all that and I'll see you guys next time.